About half a mile off the Florida Keys, a small group of scientists confronts an underwater crisis. Coral reefs here and around the world have been dying at an alarming rate. Dave Vaughn leads the team at the Moat Tropical Research Lab in Summerlin Key, about 20 miles from Key West. He says the future of the world's coral reefs is vital to the overall health of the oceans. Even though they're less than 1% of the ocean surface, they're responsible for 25 to 40% of the world's fisheries. So if we lose our corals, we really will have a big impact on everything in the ocean. This is America's only living barrier coral reef here in the Florida Keys. And it is in a, in a, in a perilous state at this point in time. The coral reefs provide the structure, the home, and the food for all the reef fish that are important, both commercially and recreationally. They also provide the place where so many thousands, hundreds of thousands of visitors go every year to spend time recreating. And they really want to see healthy reefs, they want to see a lot of fish, and they want clear water. All of these things are important to divers and to the people that enjoy our areas. Restoring those reefs are to, will keep them sustainable for the future. Billy Causey says a quarter of the world's corals have died in recent decades because of pollution, overfishing, and climate change. There's a global crisis right now occurring with coral reefs and their decline. We are already in a, in a condition here with our reefs that makes them extremely vulnerable. So everything that we can do as managers and scientists to not only understand our reefs, but to protect them for the long term, to make them more sustainable for the future, helps us. In an effort to reverse the decline, these biologists are attempting life-saving transplants for Florida's coral reefs by grafting new corals onto them. Well, these tanks are growing corals, uh, which are part animal, part plant, part mineral. They're basically a little understood organism. Other biologists have tried transplanting new corals to dead reefs, but the Moat Team's experiment is considered groundbreaking. That's because the coral species they're growing is critical to the reef structure. And until recently, it took centuries to grow. Most of these corals, the size of uh, a good boulder and size of a car, would be 500 to 1,000 years old. But now since we've lost 25 to 40 percent of the world's corals, we can't wait 100 years or a couple hundred years just to get one more of each back here. We need to try and help Mother Nature out. Vaughn and his team aren't waiting. They discover that when cut into small strips, the slow-growing living corals quickly try to heal themselves. The technique is called microfragmenting. By cutting it, you're actually stimulating it to grow. Now, these reef building corals will grow much faster than normal. We put them all in a, in a circle about the size of a dinner plate. And we think that in one year, it will grow a coral which would have taken 25 to 50 years in the wild. What he's getting with this microfragmentation is growth spurts, unlike anything we've ever seen. Once they successfully grow the corals in the nursery, the team searches for a transplant match, dead corals of the same species. A big coral boulder is essentially just a rock. It's, it's uh, the material that the living tissues have deposited over dozens or hundred years. But the only thing that's alive is that little veneer of tissue on the outside, which is essentially what we're bringing back. Before the actual transplant, the corals are placed in a cage for 30 days to protect them from predators. When the corals lose some of their color, becoming less attractive to predators, the researchers punch holes in the dead structures and attach the new corals. The hope is the two will eventually fuse together. Rudiger Bieler is documenting the marine life around this reef. To see what lives in that area before we do the restoration, what happens during the restoration, and what kind of species are coming in afterwards. But the question remains, Will these new corals, subject to the same ocean stressors as their predecessors, survive in the wild? To find out, the team is recreating current ocean conditions. They adjust acidity levels in the nursery tanks to see which corals tolerate the simulated conditions. Billy Causey says the work being done here is buying time for the world's coral reefs, but a real solution to the crisis requires a much larger response. It's giving us time for our reefs to hang on as long as they can, 
just by having stock that we can eventually put back out there. Now, will this repair the reefs like we repaired Humpty Dumpty? Well, you know the story of Humpty Dumpty, and I'm not sure we can put it all back together again. And I don't think we can rely on coral aquaculture as the, as the single solution for coral reef decline. We still have to fix land-based sources of pollution, habitat loss and destruction, and overfishing. And we're working on all of those. But it's going to take our global leaders to address climate change, and we have to have the time for those actions to take place. Watch full episodes of SciTech Central Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. on WUCF-TV.